Hola, bienvenidos a todos. Primeramente, muchas gracias a Erika y a Dirección Internacional de EPN por bienvenirme aquí. Si tú puedes escuchar, mi español no es muy bien, y por esta razón yo voy a hablar en inglés, pero um, espero que you can understand me very well. So, if I could have the first slide, please. Okay, let me just begin by uh, explaining just a little bit of uh, who I am today talking to you. So, my name is Neil Stewart. I'm a physical geographer and I am in the School of Geosciences in Edinburgh University. And a little bit of my background is that I teach and direct a master's program in geographic information and also I teach with colleagues in earth observation and in environmental sustainability. And I teach licentiaries, uh, undergraduate students in watershed management and in hydrology and in Milkoid Adelaide. Today though I'm going to talk a little bit specifically about our programs in the university, um, but just to say I'm very happy to be here today at IPN, it's so nice to be back in well, Ciudad de Mexico, and um, I have worked on a number of projects in, in Mexico and also in Guatemala and Belize over a number of years, including a recent uh, uh, collaboration with colleagues working on Los Rios de Morelia and also in a collaborative VGI methods for collecting volunteer geographic information, which is something which uh, many of the states of Mexico are exploring at the moment. So that's a little bit about me. Erica, if we can have the next slide, let's go on now and talk a little bit about Escocia. Uh, perhaps some of you have been to Edinburgh. I'm sure some of you know about the Edinburgh Festival which is a very big cultural event which happens in August every year. So if you happen to be planning to come to Edinburgh on vacation, then let me welcome you to the city and encourage you to also look at the university. So what is nice about uh, teaching in Edinburgh, I've been teaching there for many years, is that the student population uh, is really diverse. Students make up 15%, 15% del población de la ciudad. I think uh, although you have more students here, uh, in terms of the size of Mexico City, uh, the city is very big. Edinburgh is actually Mas Pequeño. Edinburgh is a small city, even though it's a capital city. And it means it's a very nice place to study, uh, it's quiet and it's safe. And those are good things, I think, for students to know. On the next slide, you can see, uh, because I'm a, a geographer, necesito some carta, no? so we have a little map here just to show you the, the city of Edinburgh, and you can see that we have uh, a campus, uh, uh, similar to the campus to EPM, with, with many of the science uh, faculties uh, here, but we also have in La parte más vieja, the old part of the city, El Centro Histórico. We also have many uh, departments here of, of social sciences, of humanities, of architecture, and actually of geography, um, some in El Centro. And what you can see by looking at this is that the distances are quite small. The whole of this could be simply the distance walking from the Socorro along Reforma, for example. It's this kind of distance, it's not very far. So you can easily get around the city. And on the next slide, please, Eric. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of architecture. This is perhaps the most famous part. It's the, the historical centro. It's, of course, the administration building and the law faculty in the very nice old, oldest buildings of the university. But also, it just gives me a chance to say a little bit about the university. Uh, we have uh, around about 20 some thousand students, so a little bit smaller than EPN. Um, but uh, we are ranked highly in the world rankings 
somewhere around number 16, and also some very famous researchers have come from Edinburgh University. The most important thing I want to say today is that actually, if you add up all of the students, what you find is that we are very diverse. There's over 160 different countries from the world in Edinburgh studying at the same time. So if you come, you'll not only meet other Mexican students, but you'll meet lots of students from the whole of Latin America. And you can see here that we are the number one destination for students from Latin America. And we have a very vibrant center for Latin American studies and some really good societies for our students uh, of Mexico, of Chile, of Brazil, for example, some very active uh, student clubs and participation. And of course, we also have lots of alumni. So you may be able to find somebody who's already been to Edinburgh, so talk to them. And in our uh, conversion events and in our live sessions, we sometimes have some of our alumni with us to explain more and to answer your questions. So perhaps next time I'm talking, that's something that we can arrange. On the next slide, please, um, I'll just explain a little bit about my uh, faculty. So, Heliographia is a part of Deathio Sciences, and that is a part of Science and Engineering. And so you can see that within Science and Engineering, all of the, the traditional disciplines are there. But we also collaborate a lot with a Sciences Socialis e Humanitaris, the Humanities, and the Social Scientists. So if your interest is, for example, in economic development, or social justice, or sustainability, you should still think about geosciences. Because although we live in science and engineering, we connect out to social sciences and the humanities very much too. And if we go to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit now about the School of Geosciences. And uh, this is a picture, this is some of my students. Uh, looks like they're having a picnic. Well, they are having a picnic, but it's part of a field trip on uh, um, um, Visit El Campo. And this uh, is just 20 minutes outside the city. Some uh, the, the small cerritos here, small hills, there's some bolsas, there's some reservoirs here for drinking water. And it's a very good place to think about La, El Pasaje and about the ways in which we try to protect the water and the environment, which is one of my interests when I'm teaching. So we teach in both practical ways, we have lots of field trips, as well as teaching in a, a laboratorio and the, the typical lecture. Thank you. Um, so if we look now, let me tell you a little bit about postgraduate study, because it's perhaps a little bit different in Scotland, in the UK, to, for example, Estados Unidos. For us, the whole thing, Toro to Maestrias, it's in one year. It's just solo one year, but it's a muy compressed, muy compressa. And in that one year, you're going to learn many new skills, lots of new knowledge, and you also will have a chance, it's not just about learning, but also about doing something practical. So you will make a project as well. So it's a, it's a very intense year, but uh, in some ways uh, that makes it more cost effective because some masters can take two years or more. You will complete, and you will be successful in one year. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about a typical year. I think on the next slide it will be simpler. Uh, after I talk a little bit about the range of master's programs. Because we are the biggest geosciences uh, group in the UK, more than 200 academics, it means that we have plenty of choice. Muy diversidad is still as maestrias. There's 15 master's programs available at the moment. My program in geographic information science is just one of 15 different programs. And you can see something here for most people. You can see a diversity. We go all the way from hydrogeology, 
which is a very useful and practical course looking at issues like the quality of, of water, El Caleda de Agua, including marine systems, so we do a lot of offshore marine protected areas. Scotland had the world's first marine protected area and uh, we work very much in terms of sustainable fishing, marine biodiversity. Um, we look at issues of energy, both in terms of extraction of energy, uh, creating natural energy sources, and um, the, the drive to create renewable energies. So we look at conventional, but also new solutions for energy. And we think about all of our, our master's programs. We think about the physical environment, but we also think about the human environment, about the people that would be affected. Even in the sea, we have people affected. We have fishermen, for example, um, and people who are using the oceans. If you're interested in sustainability, Edinburgh is a very good place to study that. Because to study sustainability, you need to know about los recursos y las poblaciones, and the balance between the two. So the programs in environmental sustainability are very strong and very popular at the moment. And the most popular course with Mexican students right now is this one on environment and development. And I notice we have at least five or six applicants from Mexico City right now for this program. And it looks at the issues of how we balance the needs for economic development with the needs to protect the environment. I think it's one of the most important challenges at the moment. And this is taught with colleagues from social sciences. So uh, it's a really good opportunity and draws on examples from all over the world. All of these courses are very international. On my course, I have 30% of my students are international students. And in some cases, 50% of the students are international. And some of them have lots of students from Latin America. On the next slide, please, Eric. I just want to also mention a few other courses. If you're interested in agriculture, in food production, in food security, and how do we protect the environment whilst producing food in sustainable ways, we have a set of courses that we teach together with our colleagues in the Scottish Rural College. And we have four master's programs and we work together with these as well. Now, if you look at this choice, and it's confundando, it's too confusing, there's too many things, it's also possible to take one of these programs, but because we are part of a, a big group, you might take a, a course which you can share from another module, another program. So, the message is there's lots of flexibility, and we work with you individually to work out a timetable and a program so that you can tailor your program specifically to your interests. So that's all about the tour program. And on the next slide, I'll just say a little bit about La Structura del Año, how we organize the year. A master's in, in Europa, in, uh, in the UK, is in three components. You have some compulsory courses, of course, in the discipline called knowledge. But you also have opciones, you have electives, where you can specialise in different directions. And the third part, which the students tell me is the most exciting part, is when you actually get to apply your experience in your own project. So if we look at the next part of the slide, you can see we divide the year into three semesters. This is usually compulsory courses. The next one is our optional courses, and the third and final part is where you get to do your own project, your own dissertation research, with supervision from the academics. Thank you. So let me now talk a little bit about PhDs, about a three-year PhD where you really specialise in a, a new area. You're going to work with world-leading scientists, and you're going to take your knowledge to the frontiers of new knowledge. So this is a, a fantastic opportunity in Edinburgh and one possibility is to do a master's first and then find your supervisors, 
decide on a topic, apply for funding, and continue to study after your master's for a PhD. I'm now just going to give a few examples. It's just a little bit of a, a taster, a um, poquito menu for a bar. So you can just get a little bit of a flavour, the uh, sabores, of what kinds of things you could do in geosciences for your PhD. We, we group the academics together in different themes. And one theme is about agua, or total sobre agua, in different kinds. So it can be frozen, in yellow, in, in, in ice. It can also be in water, and it can be for irrigation. We go through a few slides now, okay. The most important thing is, for us at the moment, is el cambio climático, climate change. It's, for us, a reality that we have to try to, not just monitor, but try to do something about how do we alleviate the problems of climate change for society. That's kind of our main reason why, as geoscientists, what we think we can do for El Mundo. This is actually in Scotland. You might think Scotland doesn't have climate change, mucho lluvio, it's very wet, it's cold, it's fine. But actually, we do have problems with climate change. This was a reservoir for agua potable, for drinking water, in the summer of 2021, just last summer. And look at the nivelas, look at how low the water level is. And when the water level is low like this, the quality of the water here is very poor, and chemical reactions happen, which make the water very poor in quality. So, using some very fancy and expensive equipment, we are able to analyze large amounts of water quality samples, and we can begin to explore across the country. I saw it's La Scotia, Inglaterra, and Barham. At different locations across the city, we can monitor and find that these peaks are peaks of poor water quality. In this case, we're looking at dissolved magnesium, which is actually very toxic when the concentration is increased. So this is a, an important part of research, monitoring our environment and understanding the risks to society. It's part of what we do, it's another one of our missions. On the next slide, Erica, you can see that we tackle con contemporary issues. I'm sure that the issue of los plásticos and contaminación is important to all of one another. It's important for us all to be able to, to study how microplastics are entering into our waters, into our glasses of water, and into our corpus. So we have to really um, concentrate on that. So this is a topic which we are studying in this master's program in applied environmental hydrology. So if you're interested in public health and water quality, this would be a great topic to, to get involved with, maybe through a master's with us. In the next slide, Erica, um, another issue is La Agua de la Tierra. Groundwater is quite important in Mexico. Um, in, in La Cuenca, Mexico City is a, is a drainage basin, and uh, as you know, problemas con subsistencia. We have problems of subsistence here in Mexico City caused by extracting too much groundwater. So again, understanding the volume and the quality of our groundwater is really important. And again, as part of master's projects, we have students working with communities, doing field work um, in different parts of the world. This example is from Africa, but groundwater is really important to, um, to understand how to improve and protect the quality of groundwater. In the next slide, Erica, we have another example. This time, it's from Nepal, where we're using digital terrain data and models of flooding to understand why certain communities are at risk of flash flooding. And I was also seeing a presentation recently about flash flooding here in Mexico City. You've had many examples where suddenly a lot of water has come, uh, not just into the places like Xochimilco, where we know there's lots of water, but in other parts of the city where we have inundaciones. So again, we're thinking about risk and we're thinking about people. Thank you, Eric. 
So I'll quickly mention another group that work on urban resilience. And on the next slide here, you can read for yourselves that we are working here between geosciences who are monitoring terremotos, big issue for Mexico as well. In this example, we're looking at monitorio, but we're also looking at, with architects, how we can build the buildings and make buildings stronger. This is something where you have a lot of experience in Ciudad de Mexico, and this was the Ciudad is aquí. In the next slide, Erica, you can see that this is a mission for, like, we have a large group of geoscientists and geophysicists who are working with architects to try to design cities uh, and make them stronger. At the moment, they're working in Kathmandu, they're working in, in Quito. I think the next slide, Erica, shows us um, an example of, of all the places where, where people are working together in big groups to try to protect cities. I think we have an example on the next slide which shows us here Quito, Kathmandu, Nairobi, Istanbul. Four cities built on volcanoes or built with seismic risks. And you can see that there's a really good opportunity for collaborating between the people who build the cities and understanding the risks and trying to develop plans so that people are, the risk is reduced. We can't reduce it completely, but there are things that we can do going forward uh, to avoid development in certain areas. So really good connections there between urban planning, architecture, geophysics, and, uh, and HIS, CIG, uh, SIG, for this project. And uh, big investments in that. So I'm sorry I can't tell you everything about all the projects we do because there's just too many, but I can give you these examples to show you the diversity of the projects. And you can see how the research that we do links into the teaching that we do. Particularly when you're studying at Masters and for PhD level, you're going to be working with us as researchers. And it won't mean that you are here and we are here, but in fact we work next to you like this in Edinburgh. If you want to come, what do you do? Well, most of the beginning is to explore the particular degree that you want to do. There are resources online, uh, Eliyama Degree Finder, which is a, a software allowing you to search and find the program that interests you. There are certain deadlines for our programs. Application cycle starts around Navidad, it runs through Pasqua, and it completes in the end of May. Um, and that's to give you time to then get recursos or becas or scholarships so that you can come and start in September. So this is the, the annual cycle. Uh, so you need to prepare, maybe it's not for this year, maybe it's for next year, but you can start thinking now. Thank you, Eric. This picture for me captures what it's like to be a student in Edinburgh. Uh, it's, we like to create an atmosphere that is inclusive, that's supportive, that's safe, that's friendly, where people from lots of different backgrounds can come and, and learn from each other, as well as learning from the professors. Next slide, please, Erica. Um, and this is where I learned this phrase, amistoso y apoyo. That's what we try to do. We try to be friendly and helpful, and we rely. We, we can recognise that we work together. In this picture, we have master students, PhD students, some staff, all together, con un bebido. So this is the atmosphere that we try to create at masters and PhD level. Of course, we have to think about recursos and funding and how you can fund your studies. And I know that finding scholarships is harder. But the good news is that there are still opportunities. Um, in fact, in Mexico, we have quite good opportunities, realistically, with uh, Conestit, uh, with full funding, with Forned, which is a part funding, with FIDER, which I think is mostly a loan. But also there could be individual scholarships. Some parts of Mexico have scholarships if you come from that particular state. Uh, I was talking to one in Guadalajara recently, in different states have different funding possibilities. We also have some scholarships 
For example, the British Council offers Chevening scholarships every year for students, and I have some applicants who are having their interviews at the moment with Chevening in different countries, hoping to join us in September. That's full funding. Um, and there's also uh, scholarships through the British Council for particular master's programmes, uh, this year for Earth Observation and for Applied Hydrogeology. And each year there's a cycle of, of these scholarships. So you can be in touch with our contacts about those. On the next slide, I want to just stress that it's not just about encouraging you to come. It's about telling you that when you come, we will look after you and that you can succeed. Um, Mexican students work very hard and they also contribute a lot. I learn a lot from my students from Mexico. Um, I hope, we hope nothing will go wrong, but if you do have any problem, there is lots of ways you can get help. I'm a supervisor for students and occasionally there are issues that you have, con salud, con dinero, problemas, and we have support systems to help you if things go wrong, so don't worry about that. Um, it's Weaver Branted has a fantastic range of opportunities. You will have a lot of fun. It's not all about work. Uh, and we have many student groups. I know that here in, um, in EPN you have fantastic sports facilities. You have Olympic uh, quality swimming pools and, and uh, American football and man many sports. So if you're, if you're interested in sports, Again, we have some really good uh, clubs, both competitive and also social. But at whatever level you are, you can find something here and meet people from different countries. Finalmente, we have to talk a little bit about afterwards. Um, because I think that if you're going to invest in a master's program, you have to hope that it's a good investment. Now, part of that is about this opportunity of being in a different country and you will learn so much about the culture, about the different ways that people think about things. So that's a fantastic uh, new experience. But I also can tell you that employability for the Edinburgh graduates is really hard. Because Edinburgh is a very well known and well reputed university, it means that if you come with that qualification, the chances of getting employment are very high. Most of my master's students already have job offers before they finish their master's. Uh, and it's very typical for Edinburgh to have a high level of employment after you finish your studies. So I think it's a good return on your investment. And then uh, we can just say that remember that it's, it's not just about studying and jobs, it's also about all the life, all the contacts, all the friends that you'll make. And you, you will keep these friends from different countries or all, all, all over the world. You'll have a fantastic network of people from this year together that you can then keep in contact with in the future. So uh, we are doing various follow-up events. Uh, we know that you may have more questions, you might like to know more. Um, here in La Ciudad, in La Siete, we have uh, drop-in one-to-one sessions um, if you want to ask more questions. Um, we will also have another event in Santiago, Chile, which will be live stream that you can join. So if you want to ask us questions there, that's another opportunity. And you can find out more about these either through contacts here, such as Erica at the International Relations, or directly by contacting us using the email future students at Ed, or through our dedicated team from Edinburgh who are in Santiago de Chile on the next slide at Ultima. We have an office based in uh, Chile which handles questions and supports all our applications from Latin America. Delinda Perez, a Mexicana, uh, she's living in, in Chile but she's super helpful in terms of uh, responding to your questions about scholarships, about what it's like to live in Edinburgh and handling those questions. We also have agents who can help you make your pre preparation of your applications and, and deal with many of those practical questions 
um, about do I need to have an offer from the university, then can I get some funding from Conocit? We can take you through all those steps in the process. So there's plenty of ways of keeping in touch with us directly. Uh, to put us have one in Espanol, of course, uh, with our contacts with Galinda and Teresa. So thank you for, for listening to this part of the presentation. I hope I was able to tell you a little bit about the diversity of studies that we have in Edinburgh, about what it would be like a little bit to come to, to study with us, what you can expect, and uh, in return for your, your hard work and spending one year. It, it's good to know that Mexican students almost always complete their studies successfully um, and have some very happy memories of studying with us in Scotland. So thank you very much for listening.